again and welcome to the joy of editing with your host Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're looking at, you guessed it again, you guys are so good. We're looking at Topaz Studio 2. Today we're looking at the Focal Blur Filter. About seven episodes ago, we looked at the Blur Filter. But I got to tell you, the Focal Blur Filter is my favorite way of adding blur to my backgrounds, especially in my flower images like the one you see on the screen. So let's get started. All right, we're starting out here in Photoshop. We're going to use the, uh, Topaz Studio 2 as a Photoshop plugin today. So let's come up here to Filter. Well, before I do, I just want to point out that you'll see here I made a duplicate of my background layer because I never want to work on my background layer. That's very important. You always want to duplicate that before you, you know, send something into another filter, be it Topaz or Luminar or whatever. You always want to duplicate your background layer. So now that that's established, let's come up here to Filter and come down to Topaz Studio and come to Topaz Studio 2. And let's launch it. There's our little parrot. And it launches pretty darn quick, I must say, which is nice. So let's come up here to Add Filter. Now, in the uh, Blur episode I told you about whenever I add Blur to images, I definitely like to run AI Clear so I can get rid of any uh, noise in the image. Because whenever you blur a background, it's going to eliminate noise. So you want to get the noise off the entire image. That's very important. So let's click on AI Clear. And let's just let that run. And you notice what happened here. This looks horrible, right? Because AI Clear shifted these colors all over the place. That doesn't happen too often. And remember the episode I was talking to you about noise reduction? How I was saying, it's kind of nice that uh, Topaz Studio 2 do add the, let me click here, add filter, add the reduce noise. Because sometimes AI Clear messes up. It doesn't it doesn't often do it, but it does sometimes. Like here, it's color shifting the image. So we could come here and reduce noise with the reduce noise filter. But I'm going to do it a different way today as an added bonus. But before we do that, let's come over to our blending mode. And remember I told you, uh, if you ever get a, like a color shift or anything, you could change your blend mode from norm normal to luminosity. Let's try that. Let's click on luminosity. That helps a little bit, but still not good enough for me yet. So let's come up here to the eyeball and click here so we can see the before and the after. Still a bit of a color shift there, and I don't like it. I'm not going to be happy with that color. I like this color, and that's the color I want. All right, so let's come up here and cancel out of uh, Studio 2. So let's just click on cancel, and we're back in Photoshop. Now here's my little uh, bonus for you today. I'm going to show you... Uh, Topaz Denoise AI. Uh, it's a it's a filter that you have to purchase separately, and it's it's a little on the expensive side. I think it's like ninety nine dollars. Don't hold me to that, but I think it is. A lot of times you can get a discount on it, but it's not it's not cheap. But I'll tell you, it's very very good. And a lot of people would like to know which should I have? Should I have Denoise AI? Should I have uh, AI Clear. They're both very good, but I'll tell you, Denoise AI is very exceptional. It's it's the top of the line in Denoise reduction. So let's give that a shot here. So let's come up here to Filter and come to Topaz Labs and let me find Denoise AI right here. Let me click that. That's going to launch uh, Topaz Denoise AI. And let's see what it does. This takes a little longer to process. Okay, and it's on auto right now. And let's look at the before and after here. There's the original. There's the after. And it's doing a really, really nice job of getting rid of that noise. So let me just go ahead. And this is not a, a Topaz Denoise AI tutorial. I'm going to give you a tutorial on that, but not today. But I'm just doing this because I'm having issues with Topaz AI Clear. But I want to show you. This is my second form of attack if I'm having problems with uh, Topaz Studio 2. So let me click on Apply. And we've totally got rid of our noise and sharpen up our image a little bit and this sharpens your image and as well as gets rid of noise which is really nice it takes a little bit longer it's a little more um, processor intensive or i should say graphic processor intensive due to all that artificial intelligence so all right so here we go now we can come back and launch topaz studio 2 and now i can show you what i want to show you 
Okay, let's click on Add Filter and come down to the Creative section and click on Focal Blur. And when I do, notice right away on the screen here, over my image, I have this circle target that comes up here. We'll get back to that in a second, but let's go over to the actual controls over here. And of course, we have our opacity, as I always tell you about, and we have our blend modes, we have our presets, we have our little icon where we can save a preset, and we have the trash can where we can delete a preset. And I've been telling you guys wrong, and it was pointed out to me, uh, on a comment on one of my videos, I think it was Paul Meekin, I believe his name is, and he was telling me, hey Dave, this is a, this trash can gets rid of your um, uh, presets. You can delete presets with it, not the filter. This trash can up here is what deletes the filter. Okay, so I apologize for that. So thank you, Paul, for pointing that out to me. But anyway, so let's click this trash can on here. And you can see, delete center focus, delete soft foreground, delete soft sky, which are presets in here. And let me just click on the presets here so you can see. So there's those presets, so center focus, soft foreground, and soft sky. So again, the delete, if you should choose to delete a preset that you've made or one of the built-in presets, you can delete it with this trash can here. So I just wanted to make that correction. All right, I do stand corrected. Now, Let's go to this circular target here. Now you can take this and you can move it all around. And you notice when you do the blur, the blur is on the outside circle here and it transitions, it's solid blur from here up to, up to this line and then it'll transition into the center of this circle here. Okay, so you can move it all around. Now let's just do something here. Let's take this blur and move it the whole way up to the right. Okay, so, and by the way, we have two controls. We have blur and we have transition. And we also have two types of blur. We have circular blur and we have tilt shift blur. I'm going to show you tilt shift blur too. It's really awesome. I have another image for that. It wouldn't work well for this image, but it would work nicely on the second image that I'm going to show you. So, so let's take that blur as we have it the whole way up here. Now let's take the transition and move it the whole way to the left so we have no transition. And can you clearly see that line of blur? So we have full blur the whole way up to here, okay, because we have no transition. Now watch when I start to pull that transition up. Watch how it bleeds into the rest of the image, and that gives it that natural look. So in a case like this, and I'll tell you what I'm trying to accomplish on this image. On this particular image, and let me just shut this blur off now by coming up to the eyeball. What I'm trying to accomplish on this image, and I do this a lot in my flower images, I love lens baby lenses, and a lot of times I don't want to mess with a lens baby lens because they're really finagly in there. I hope that's a good word, finagly, but they're kind of rough to work with. And a lot of times they're not a lot of fun, but they're great lenses and I use them a lot, but sometimes I just don't want to bother with it. But I can use Topaz Studio 2 with this um, focal blur and give me that same result. So basically what I want to do is I want the center flower in sharp focus and I want the rest of these background flowers to go more out of focus, okay? To give you more of that lens baby look, okay? So let's click on Add Filter again, and let's come back down to uh, Focal Blur. All right, so now let's take this and move it around here, right around there. Now, I think this circle needs to be bigger. Now, you see these blocks here, 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 and here. If you pull on any one of these blocks, you'll make the entire circle bigger. Okay, so you can move it in and out. Now these blocks here that are on the circle, you can adjust the shape of the circle. Okay, so we can pull in any of those. So I'm gonna leave it pretty much circular. And I'm gonna take this blur and pull it the whole way up because it's gonna help me to find out how I want this circle to be adjusted. Now I'm not gonna leave this much blur, believe me, that doesn't look right, it looks unnatural. But what I wanna do is I want most of this flower in focus. So I'm gonna pull on this. And I reduce the size of my image so I have room, because if my image was big, I'd run out of room to pull this circle bigger, okay? So that's a little tip. You want to make your image smaller so you can really pull on this. And just watch the petals around the edge here. So I want to get those guys. So they're all pretty much in focus. And I'm thinking maybe somewhere in that position right there and that kind of looks like what that lens baby effect would look like now to get rid of this circle target here just come over here to this little target icon and give that a click 
All right, let's make this a little bigger now. All right, so now that's way too much blur. So let's take the blur and take it the whole way off. And now let's just slowly build it up and get it to where it looks kind of natural like a lens baby lens. And right about there, guys, that's what a lens baby lens would look like because you've got a nice sweet spot of focus on a lens baby lens. I like that, and that looks really nice. Now, don't forget we added that uh, denoise AI to the beginning of this image, at the beginning of this image, so we have no noise in the picture. So I have, no, because remember I told you, whenever you blur something, it's going to totally eliminate noise when you blur it. Okay, so it's always good to do noise reduction first. Okay, it's very, very important. So that takes care of that. And that's basically it. Now, we have this transition. Again, we can adjust it. And you see that transition line? So we can just move it just to where we like it maybe somewhere right in there here we are back in photoshop and with this particular image i want to show you how the tilt shift blur works so it's really cool first thing we want to do is always duplicate our background layer that's command j on a mac control j in a pc come up to filter and click on topaz studio topaz studio 2 we'll launch topaz studio 2 hi mr barrett and here we are. So let's come to Add Filter. And the first thing we want to do so that we make this thing look realistic is add AI Clear. And the reason we do that, I'll explain it one more time, and that is because whenever we add blur to an image, blur will totally eliminate noise from the picture, okay? And the, the area of the picture without the blur could have some noise, so it's going to look very unnatural. So in order to sell this, fake so to speak because we didn't use a tilt shift lens to take this picture and we're simulating a tilt shift lens we've got to use ai clear or some kind of noise reduction to get rid of that noise or else art add artificial grain to the blur area in this case i think it's easier just to use like ai clear because it works so well now the first image i had trouble with it remember those those uh, purple flowers this image Check it out before and after. No color shift whatsoever. So it's rare that that happens, but it does happen. It didn't work, happen on this one, so that's good. So we've added our AI clear. So now let's come and go to uh, Focal Blur. Give it a click. And this time we want to click on Tilt Shift. All right. Now with Tilt Shift, we don't get any uh, fancy... Um, target or anything when i click this target nothing happens okay but this is cool let's look at the uh controls here of course the opacity the blend modes the presets the uh icon to add a your own preset in the trash can to get rid of presets all right but then we have blur so let's just turn that blur up a good bit and then we have size which controls the size of the blur see how the blur is widening out as i move the size here and then we have position. We can move that position up or down the image. And then we have rotation. We can rotate the blur. Can you see it rotating there? Which is kind of cool. You can put it anywhere you want. Let's uh, double click rotation, double click position, double click size, and double click blur. Get everything back to default. And right now, if you look at this image, it kind of looks like it's a miniaturized village, right? And that's kind of what the uh, tilt shift kind of does. It gives you this really cool miniature village look. And that's what it's really good for. I don't use it a whole lot, but it is cool. And look how neat that looks. All right. So all you have to do here is adjust the amount of blur that you want. This is simple. And adjust the size of that slice in the center, how much you want in focus and let's say i think that looks pretty cool now let's position it let's maybe make this area more in focus right here so let's just take that position and i'm going to drag it to the left which moves it down if i drag it to the right it moves it up so i'm going to say right around in here because i like this area in focus here and let me maybe make it a little bit wider here so let's take the size up just a little bit but isn't that cool it looks like a miniaturized village and i think it's really awesome let me just give it a little bit more blur i think it needs just maybe a little bit more to really sell that well, today we learned all about the focal blur filter. I love this filter. I use it all the time on my flower images to simulate that lens baby type look. It's really awesome. And um, 
I hope you enjoyed this video today, everyone. If you did, please give it a like and please also share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please do so and click that bell notification icon. I really appreciate that. And also when you do that, you will be informed of all the new training videos that I'm putting out. Well, thanks for joining me again today on The Joy of Editing with me, Dave Kelly, and I will see everyone here next time.